What moves you, Mr. Ellett? Um, we certainly understand uh, Professor Butler's interest in this issue. What is yours? Or was there a cause? That you, is there something that got you upset? Uh, is it taxation? Is it the federal, uh, the, um, the IRS? Why, are, why do you want jurors to be told that they can vote their conscience? Because it's part of our noble heritage. It's something we've had since day one. It was, does it, it, was it not eliminated in 1895 by it, the United States Supreme Court? No, the Supreme Court said that trial judges no longer had to instruct juries at the time that they had the power to nullify the law. I that see. power is still in effect. What the Fully Informed Jury Association wants to do is make judges uphold the law. That is, inform the jurors of their inherent powers which predate the Constitution. Yeah, but, you know, I think those who claim uh, the anarchy will be the re result well, I, have something to say to well, us Well, I think here. Professor Butler rebutted that to a certain extent when he said that that has not happened in Indiana and Maryland and Georgia and the other state where, that, where jurors do have the right to judge the law on the fact. Mm -hmm. Was there one issue that uh, motivated you? Just the love of the Bill of Rights. I saw it deteriorating, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So while you want us, audience, to know you're, you're foursquare against anybody who would bomb someone indiscriminately and kill innocent people, you must understand what is moving the militia. Yes, the militia, I guess, is uh, trying to uphold liberty in their own possible way. Maybe it'd be misguided. But they, if they haven't been convicted of anything, that's fine. But yeah. so far, they have not been, been convicted of anything. I don't see how this ties into the militia in particular. But. Well, because they agree uh, with you that uh, this might be one way to uh, forestall an autocratic and powerful institutional legal system, most especially the federal one, uh, that possible. railroads uh, uh, the little guy and doesn't give you much of a chance unless you have a jury of your peers that is free at the pronouncement of the judge to vote its own conscience in the matter that's before the court. Well, the Phil, let's, let's have a little bit more respect for jurors than that. Why do we think that if jurors vote their conscience, they're not going to lock the country's up murderers? Fall down. Yeah, the jurors will lock up murderers, rapists, robbers. There's nothing that makes me think that they wouldn't. And I've had experience prosecuting yeah. crimes before jurors. You know, I look at that Susan Smith in South Carolina. She rolled that car into that uh, lake with those two little babies in the back seat and I say to myself this woman is crazy there's no way a woman possibly she's n I'm gonna let her walk <laughs> how is Susan Smith endangering to you why can't I vote my conscience as I sit there through that trial looking at this mother distraught at well, the law I have 12 jurors <laughs> so <laughs> well we got a the question is, I think, that for 12 minds together to say that there's something that outweighs the law here, it's going to be something. It's going to be something that really shocks the conscience, where it would be an injustice to have a conviction. Because otherwise, you're not going to get 12 people to come together around it that way. And all I'm saying, Phil, is it shocks my conscience that there are more black men in prison than in college. That shocks my conscience. All right. Uh, from the San Francisco Chronicle, I'll just take a moment of your time, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> Nearly 40% of African American men in their 20s in California are imprisoned on parole or on probation, a, re a rate nearly eight times higher than for whites. Although blacks make up nearly one-third of the prison population, this is California, they constitute only 18% of those arrested. At the same time, whites make up 35% of those arrested, but less than 30% of the state's inmates. If you're black and you get arrested, you're going to jail. If you're you white are, and you get arrested, you probably you are. aren't going to go to jail. One third of white first offenders had their charges reduced, while only one quarter of African Americans and Latinos were given similar considerations. And will be, incidentally, in the report discovered that a number of state prisoners jumped 44% in five years, rising from 94,000 inmates to 135. The bias thousand. comes in in That happened in five points. years in California, 94,000 to 134. It's not just convicting and acquitting. The bias comes in in, in who the police arrest, in who the prosecutors right. choose to prosecute, and what the charges are. And, and how then well they're sentencing. defended. And the reason I think some people prefer sentencing guidelines is they're supposed to be generally applied regardless of the race of the defendant. I think there are concerns about certain guidelines, but 
I think what some people are saying here is that the guidelines, three strikes and you're out, that ends up being too fair. We want to go back to a situation where the judge has discretion, and whenever you have discretion, then that's where prejudice can creep well, in, too. So you, you're, you you're, go around a, you're in You're certainly circle. not for mandatory sentencing, are you? No, I, I think the sentencing guidelines have gone too far. I like the You've got a lot of white judges. guys in state legislatures proving to their constituents in rural America how tough they are on crime, and in the middle of the night these laws are being passed, and it affects black people. Well, and it affected white people. What happened with the sentencing guidelines <clears throat> is, that, is that white federal defendants started going to jail when the judges used to let them off because they had a nice educational background, they came from a nice family. Right. In, in fact, once they started putting in sentencing guidelines, those factors got washed out and what you did became the primary factor. You're first when we come back in just a moment. <laughs>